Who are you? Yeah, yeah, who are you? That's what I'm interested in knowing. Just go hang out there in the blackness for a bit. You may not like it at first, but we'll grow on you. Are you serious? You're just gonna you're just gonna punish me like this? I haven't even done anything to you. What is this? Let's talk about video game development for a second. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, which yeah. determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Oh. Like all engines, Source has certain ah! things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Oh, I thought I was going to die there for a second. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. What is this? Okay, don't- Oh! God! Why am I so scared? I'm not scared. I have everything under control, people. Everything under control. Always. I What? What is this? Ah, oh, that's the way I go. Oh no! This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games <laughs> that was full of hundreds of individual games each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Oh. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't. You got troll just like you trolled me and Stanley Parable. How does that feel? I mean, if the viewers like it, I have nothing against the fact that you troll me because I do it for, for my friends, for my audience. For the people who supported my channel and supported me. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last I'm talking time. about my feelings. Thank you. I do this for the people who I love and who love me. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. I was told that this game required a lot of thinking. I don't know if I'm playing it wrong. Maybe I'm just not thinking, oh, okay. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Yes, there was a roll stand with, with, with whiteness. Yes, there was an anonymous Christmas, but I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna tell you. You think you want to get through it, but trust me, you don't. How about I, how about I use that one? Wait, let me describe it for you. Let me tell you all about what's over there. All right, I will tell you how to 
forward. Okay. What? I'm not gonna speak. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna tell him. I'm gonna tell him. Relax. Okay, you have to. You have to go to a door. And okay, okay. Listen, you have to go to a door. And then you open the door. And then there's another door there. And then you need to close that door. What the fuck? What? Hello, how did you get here? What's that possibly at the pastor? Yes, do you want to know how to solve it? No, I've been right here the entire time. No, I've been in this entire time. That's right. That's right. Who are you? Yeah, yeah, who are you? That's what I'm interested in knowing. Just go hang out there and if like this for a bit, you may not like this person. Oh. Are you serious? You're just gonna you're just gonna punish me like this? I haven't even done anything to you. What is this? And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. It's a lamppost. Okay, I can't tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're gonna see it in the work as well. His games are just gonna become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. I think this is the end of the second episode. Yeah, it, it this game is connected to the internet. What? To walk around you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. Are you are you sure? Nice room. Not ha! Great, great internet. That's that's just awesome. So first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game, this game is not connected to the internet. All of the notes that you're gonna see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. No, I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. <laughs> In Holy retrospect, shit. I think I was probably a bit too bushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. But it's ironic, isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person oh, socializing. Wow, I could just get to know you through your work. Wait, wait, wait. I just saw this. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games okay, so much. Okay, can, can you shut up? It's because it felt like they let me I'm have trying that to connection. read something out. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Okay, can I can I speak now? Thank you very much. I just saw a flying penguin. 
Let me tell you it was the most majestic thing I have ever seen. I don't feel like living because what? I don't feel like living because nothing will ever be as majestic as that. I never want to see again if nothing will ever be that beautiful again. I'm crying now and plan on ripping my eyes out. I must go now to do that. Ah. <laughs> oh, that that's that's definitely my favorite one. I love that one. What the hell? Okay. What what uh what the shit is going on? Okay, you know what? I'm not gonna read everything. Oh my god, I can't not read it. I can I show you guys that there is an icon somewhere here in this place and say that looking for an anchor. Okay. There's nothing here. Go back. Don't listen to that guy. <laughs> awesome. It's it's just great. A uh, free T-shirt. Need of the side door. Why you so? What the make game includes door cannot open door. Thanks. Open Sam. <laughs> oh, I love this. It's so great. It's so funny. Someday I will meet the person who made this. I help people because of the inter interall good feeling I get. The, the interall good feeling I get. I. Why is my phone vibrating when I'm recording a video? Don't people know better than to text me when I'm recording a video? Thing is that nobody ever texts me. But when I'm recording a video, then people suddenly text me. Hey, don't talk about me that way. What? What did I did I lose some drama here? Sabination. What is that painting? It does not matter if you ever get over there. Hey, don't talk about me like that. I don't understand. Can I just jump? Can I just kill myself? No, I can't. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces together. To grasp at that elusive bigger picture. Okay, this Born one is stars tough. die. It's gonna kind of just spin its own wheels for okay, a few. Okay, 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 okay. Let me just, let me just, let me just hear what this man has to say before I end this episode. Minutes. Hang with it. 
Okay. Peace out, guys. I see you in the next episode of whatever this game is. Um, yeah. Um, hasta la vista, hermanos. Espero que tengan un buen día. O unas buenas tardes. O no sé qué hora sea en este momento. Pero bueno, hasta luego. Peace out. Peace out.